Daniel chapter number 3, and uh, we'll begin reading uh, for sake of time down about verse number 14. The Bible, and you know the, the situation, wicked king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, has built a great big graven image, and he has sent out a decree that everybody must fall down and worship the image. But there were three hard-headed Jew boys uh, that said, no, we're not going to do it. And we'll pick up the story after they realized they wasn't going to do it, and it was reported to the king that they didn't do it. These men had been promoted into his kingdom. And this is what happens in verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. Or in other words, well with you. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it well uh, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Wonder why he got the most mighty men. Ah, uh, were these guys such a threat? Hmm. Just think about that. Uh, but he, he, he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, uh, and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I guess God's just trying to show them they weren't that mighty at all. Hmm? Huh? Verse number 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, for the fourth, uh, for the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Sure do thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, we thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good congregational singing. Thank you for your church family. Thank you, Lord, again for what you've done for folks this morning, especially those that got born again. But God, what happened this morning will not suffice for tonight. Lord, I realize it's a different uh, uh, time. It's a different crowd. It's a different atmosphere. But Lord, you're the same God. And Lord, you want to speak to our hearts. And Lord, as we are preparing to get ready for revival, I pray that it would break out and start in our hearts tonight. Lord, help us to realize that true revival is just being refocused on what is really important, and that is the will of God for our lives. Help us to seek your face. Help us to hunger and thirst for you and your righteousness. Now, Father, be with all those that are sick. Touch them, help them, restore their health unto them. Father, these that uh, 
have been sick that are here tonight. Miss Kathy, Miss Janet, thank you for that. Brother Ed, thank you for that. But Father, I pray that, Lord, you would be with those that have been in our services recently that, Lord, haven't done business with God, especially those that may be lost without Christ. I pray wherever they are, you'd continue to speak to their hearts, and I pray we'd see the will of God manifested in their heart and lives. Now, Father, help us tonight. Without you, we can do nothing. And, Father, speak to our hearts, and certainly bless these thy people. Help us to draw closer to God. Help us, Lord, to ever long for you, and we'll thank you for it. Use this unworthy vessel again. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In these verses, we find wonderful truths, and we find the account of this wonderful story in the Scriptures. Now, this is more than a story. It's an actual event. But I want you to notice in verses 14 and 15, we see the commands. Nebuchadnezzar tells these men, I understand you didn't bow before my image and worship my gods, uh, but I'm going to give you another chance. And if you hear the sound and you fall down and worship, it'll be well. But if not, I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. Hmm? The king sets forth his commands. Make no mistake, Shadrach, Meshach, and, under, and, and Abednego understood exactly what the king meant. There wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Wasn't no wishy-washiness about it. As a matter of fact, can I say this? These weren't, this king wasn't like some of our politicians. Say one thing, do another. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that if they didn't fall down and worship these images, they were going to face that fiery furnace. We see the commands. But notice their convictions. Look at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, they're saying we're not flippant. We're not being smart Alex. here. We know what we're about to say. What we're about to say is the conviction of our heart and wherein we stand. Notice what they said. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, uh, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Said, we know our God's able to deliver us from that fiery furnace. Hmm? But notice what else they said. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Said, regardless of the furnace, one thing's for sure. We serve him and not you. And he will deliver us out of your hand, one way or the other. And by the way, can I say sometimes God's will is not always to deliver us out of the furnace, but to deliver us out of the situation by taking us home. Hmm? Uh, that's why I respect Brother Greg Neal so much. He had that daughter who passed away that watched her uh, 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 with her way through a problem for seven months and they prayed God would deliver her and, and he said God answered our prayer God took her home but he said God answered our prayer he delivered her from uh, the sickness that she had uh, we see their convictions notice their verse number 18 they said but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou set, set up they said they, they had some courage right here they said, we're not going to serve you. How many people on their jobs cower to pressure? How many people in their family cower to pressure? They won't stand for God. They won't because they're afraid of the outcome. They're fearful that somebody is going to look at them different or somebody is going to uh, uh, rebuke them or somebody's not going to appreciate their stand. These men uh, had such conviction uh, and such courage they did not care what the king thought. They spoke the truth. Hmm? Uh, you know what would help uh, uh, Christianity in 2024? If we had Baptists that had the same convictions and courage that these men had. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so tired of wishy-washy Christians, aren't you? Three of us are tired of wishy-washy Christians. Notice, if you will, the cost. In verses 20 through 23, we find that they're bound up, and they're, that when the furnace is open, it just destroys the mighty men that had them, but yet they fell into the furnace. Now I don't understand that they're all bound. 
I don't know if these men were pushing them, got too close to the flames, uh, and it killed those men. I don't know. But I do know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into that furnace. Hmm? God did not deliver them from the furnace. Hmm? They did go to the furnace. Huh? Can I say this? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have not read the end of the story. Boy, we can stand up and say, bless God, they didn't bow, they didn't bend, they didn't burn. Hallelujah, huh? Because we've read the end of the story. They didn't. All they know is they've told the king, stick it, and the king's got them all tied up, and the fiery furnace is open, the men that are behind them die, and they fall into the furnace, huh? They haven't read the end of the story. Mm -mm. A lot of times we'll read these and we'll, oh yeah, bless God, God did this, God did it. Mm, but what if God doesn't? We see the confusion in verse 24. The king said, didn't we throw in three? He said, yeah. Hmm. The king's all confused because he sees four. Huh? You say, well, who's the fourth man? Well, that's Christ. We see that in verse 25. He said he's likened to the Son of God. How did Nebuchadnezzar know what the Son of God is? Because there's no mistaking when Jesus shows up. Uh, but can I say he was in there waiting on them. He's one that caught them when they fell. Uh, uh, why didn't they burn? Because he was there. Uh, hey, uh, do you know our God can transcend elements in time and space? Uh, uh, nothing impacts him because he's the one that made everything. huh? And he protected them. Of course, we know they come out of the fiery furnace. They don't smell like smoke. Uh, not a hair on their head or arm has been singed. Their clothes uh, are, are just fine. Why? Because God is well able. Hmm? I'm interested tonight in verse 18. These men have made a stand. But in verse 18 they said, But if not... With God's help, I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on, but if not, will you still serve God? What if God doesn't give you the end of the story? Are you still going to serve Him? Can I say in this day and age, those that still serve God in the buff end, but if nots are the ones that are making the greatest impact. The Joe Osteen era of uh, making sure everything is pie in the sky and God's going to do something great for you and everything, that is not where people live. But when people see that folks are facing uh, furnaces in their lives uh, and God doesn't step in uh, and take their $100 and make it $10,000, uh, God allows them to go through the fiery, uh, fire, furny, fiery furnace, but they see God in those people's lives in the furnace. But that's when Nebuchadnezzar saw God, when those men were in the furnace. But if not, will you still serve God? Hmm? We got some that their God only shows up on Sunday morning. I don't understand it. Not my place to judge it. But let me just say this. I'm not looking forward to standing before Christ for things I've done and said in my life. But I'm sure glad I'm not going to stand before God before some of these other people and what they've done in their life. Because I do know what the Bible teaches. And all I can say is this. The Holy Ghost don't let me live that way. Amen. Huh? But they're just some. They blow in, blow out. Maybe they're nothing more than blowhards. I don't know. Maybe they just haven't truly given God all of themselves. I don't know. But I know one thing. They can't have an effective witness without being faithful. Hmm? You just can't. Hmm? Uh, I'll never forget one time... Somebody showed up, and we introduced, you know, how we are visitors. And somebody had invited that person to church, but the person invited them wasn't here. 
And the person invited them didn't let me know they wasn't going to be here. So what do you say to the person? Well, they're sorry and they're no good. I mean, what else can you say? They don't love God. No, you can't say that kind of stuff, but that's what you're thinking. Sure. How sad a testimony. By the way, that person never came back. Hmm? But if not, will you still serve God? Boys, we're sober in here. Can I say this? If he does not hearken unto you, will you still serve him? So I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I've heard everybody say God hears and answers prayer but he hadn't hearkened unto me. He hadn't answered my prayer. Will you still serve him? By the way, he may have answered your prayer. Maybe just not the way you wanted him to. God answers every prayer with either yes, no, or not now. Regardless of the answer, are you still going to serve him? Hmm? If he didn't hearken to you, preacher, I have prayed. I have sought God. Uh, I believe it's the will of God. Uh, and God never answers. Never hearkens to you. Never lets you know what he's up to. You still going to serve him? By the way, go study the book of Job. God never spoke to Job. Not through all of his persecution, through all his trials, through all his pitfalls. God did not speak to Job. Job just served God. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Uh, I wonder if God doesn't hearken to you, you still going to serve him? But if not, I'm still going to serve God. Do hmm? uh, you realize who God is? He's God. Uh, how marvelous, how wonderful that he would even love us. Do you realize being saved uh, is a tremendous honor and blessing that is undeserved, uh, that was imputed unto us because of the goodness of Christ. Uh, we don't deserve to be saved. Uh, and who are we to demand anything of God? Uh, it is a privilege that God even thinks about us. Uh, and if God chooses not to hearken unto us, uh, we ought to still say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, lift up holy hands. Uh, say, I deserve to go to hell. I'm not going to hell. Uh, my name's recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, I've been saved, robed in the righteousness of Christ. Uh, I'm getting to go to New Jerusalem, uh, spend eternity with the Lord. I don't deserve that. And if God chooses not to hearken unto me, I'm still going to serve him and bless his holy name. Uh, but many don't. If he does not hearken to you, you're still going to serve him? If he doesn't help you, are you still going to serve him? I, I'll be honest with you. I've been in services where folks stand up saying, God help me do this, and God help me do that, and God help me, and I've been praying, and God hadn't helped me. Hmm? Let me help you something. You cannot base your service on Almighty God on what he does for others. Number, number one, he's God. Number two, he does all things well. And number three, he's faithful and true. And number four, I've learned a lot of Baptists lie. Hmm? I've heard Baptist preachers get up and tell you what, how to live and all that, only find out they live like the devil. Uh, you can't base your spirituality on what somebody else is saying, what somebody else is confessing, uh, what somebody else said God did for them. If God did do something for them, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, maybe someday he'll do something for me. Uh, but if not, am I still going to serve God? Amen. What if he never helps me? Hmm? You still going to serve him? Where is God obligated to help us? God helped us when he saved us. You know, he wasn't even obligated to do that. How many of you, it took more than one time hearing the gospel before you got saved? You know, God wasn't obligated to speak to you a second time. I think he has helped us. Hmm? God wasn't obligated to leave us the church, but he did. God wasn't obligated to leave us the Bible, but he did. Why? Because he's for us. 
He wanted to teach us how to trust in him, how to depend on him, uh, how to live. Uh, he wanted us to know his very will, but he's not obligated to help us. He already has helped us. But if he never helps you, if he never sits down in your lap, if he never comes by your address, if he never sends that thing you've been praying about, you still going to serve him? Hmm? But if not, will you still serve God? Hmm? Let me say this. If he does not heal you, are you still going to serve him? There are a lot of people that say, oh, God's going to heal me. God's going to touch me. I hope he does. But if he doesn't, you still going to serve him? By the way, if you're saved, he has healed you. He's healed you of all sins, diseases. He healed your soul. Huh? But he's not obligated to heal you. Hmm? Let me help you something. Graveyards are full of people. Amen. By the way, it's not God who gave you whatever you got. Sin brought that forth. God made man and put him in a perfect environment, but when man chose to sin, death came into this world, disease came into this world, and all of that came because of sin. God never promised to heal these physical bodies, but he's going to change them one day. But if he never heals you, are you going to serve him? Colonel, you're an inspiration. You come to church in a wheelchair. What if he never lets you out of that wheelchair? Are you still going to serve him? I believe you will. Hmm? I believe you will. But I know some got the pooch mouth, get a hangnail, God doesn't heal them. God don't love me. Shut up. He proved his love on Calvary, not what he does for you physically. Huh? If God never heals you, you still going to serve him? Huh? Miss Crystal, an inspiration. Amen. Facing treatments, come to church. I know some, if they got to take a nose spray, they won't come to church. Huh? But if God never heals you, you still going to serve him? I was in that church last week, found out there, uh, uh, the fellow that was uh, there, uh, he told me a year ago that he had a heart episode. He said 15 years ago, he got... Uh, uh, zapped with electricity some 220 that damaged the back part of his heart well last year he had a heart episode brother Ray said his weight had got well over 300 pounds and he ended up in the hospital they did all the tests they said you got a heart problem we hope we can fix it we don't know if we can all that weight's not helping you and uh, on Monday, they were scheduled to do a, another angiogram to check out how much damage was done. On Sunday, the church prayed for him. He goes on Monday. Uh, they did the angiogram on him, the heart calf, uh, and they uh, uh, closed him back up, come, told his wife, said, she said, well, what? Say he don't have any heart problems. <laughs> he said, we've compared angiograms and looked at things. He said, they used to, the back part of his heart was damaged uh, there is no more damage. Uh, there is no damage in his heart. There's no damage in his arteries. Uh, everything we saw on Friday is not there today. What happened? She said, the Lord. Uh, but what if the Lord doesn't come by your way and heal you? huh? Yeah, by the way, he's dropped almost 100 pounds uh, taking care of himself. And I'm just trying to tell you, what if God doesn't help you? What if he doesn't heal you? You still going to serve him? Well, I love hearing stories like that, but can I say there's a whole lot more stories uh, that you hear where God doesn't step in than when He does. That's why when we hear one of them stories, it excites us. Well, what if God doesn't heal you? You still going to serve Him? You got a purpose in your heart with every breath till your last dying breath. You're going to live to give God glory. Huh? I love that song Brother Ray sang. Somebody sang it here recently. I'm going to die on the battlefield. You ought to make up your mind you're in this thing. You're going to serve God till Jesus comes. Come what may, I'm going to serve him. Hmm. Let me ask you this. If God doesn't honor you, will you still serve him? Say, what do you mean? Uh, 
that old song, I, I, it might have been Micah Henson wrote it. If he never blesses me again. Huh? If he never honors you, if he never blesses you again, you still going to serve him? Hmm? Can I help you with something? The blessings of God are not contingent on what we do to merit them. God chooses to bless us because he loves us. That's the only reason he'll bless us. And if God chooses to bless you, you ought to bless his name. If God chooses to withhold blessings from you, you ought to bless his name. Again, uh, he knows what's best. Uh, he does all things well. Uh, God may not bless you and I because uh, he's wanting to see uh, 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 if we'll still be faithful uh, without the blessings. But God may choose not to bless us uh, uh, so we can still uh, uh, show others he's serving. Uh, God may choose to bless somebody because he can trust it with it uh, and others he might not be able to trust. I don't know what God uh, does in his equation of blessings uh, but he allows you to get up out of bed today. Uh, he's allowing you to breathe his air uh, and he's giving you a little change in your pocket, little fuel in your tank, uh, little groceries in your cup. Uh, sounds like he's blessing you. Uh, uh, he don't have to uh, but he's been good to us. Uh, but if he cuts off the blessings, you still going to serve him? Hmm? Uh, can I say he's God on the mountain or God in the valley? He's still God. Right. But is he still God in your life? I know some people, they're mountaintop Christians. Everything's going good. Whoa, God's good. Things aren't going good. You could, a bloodhound couldn't find them. I'm just wondering, if, if, if he doesn't honor you, will you still serve him? Let me ask you this. If he does not lay his hand on you, will you still serve him? So what are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying, if God never uses you, are you still going to serve him? Hmm? I know some people, as long as they got a job or a title or a position or something to do, boy, they're all about serving God. But you put them on a, on a church pew, and you see what they're made of. If God never puts his hand on you ever again to use you, you still going to serve him? If God never puts any unction on you, you still going to serve him? I mean, without his touch, we're not much. But if he never touches us again, if he never allows us to see the glory again, you still going to serve him? Hmm? If God never utilizes any of your ideals, you still going to serve him? I've seen people get madder than a wet hen. If they got an ideal and you choose not to use it, that don't mean it's a bad ideal. Just mean God don't want to use it. By the way, it may have occurred to you, but nothing's ever occurred to God. Uh, and he knows if our ideals are work or not work. Hmm? So I wonder if he never, ever lays his hand on you again. Never looks your way, never looks my way again. We still going to serve him? Some people, their only identification is based upon what they're doing for God. Your identification ought to be Jesus Christ. He's in me and I'm in him. Hmm? What happens, Brother Jim, God forbid, you end up in a nursing home. Does that mean God's not God? Hmm? God forbid we end up in a hospital bed the rest of our lives. Does that mean God's not God? See, he's God whether or not he chooses to use us in the limelight or in the shadows. He's still God. Hmm? I've had people get mad if I don't let them sing. That's why on Sunday night I ask you if you got a song. And everybody sits around and looks at each other. I don't always know the will of God. And I certainly don't know the mind of God. I may want to have somebody sing, and God may be touching somebody's heart to sing. So that's why I open it up every now and then. Hmm? But if God never lets any of us sing, preach, 
teach, testify, do anything but sit on a pew. We're still going to come take up our spot and serve him? I mean, is he really worthy to be praised? Can I say that you praise the Lord coming to church? You're letting the world know there's something worth going to church for. Whether God ever uses me or not. Hmm? Well, some of you about to pass out, and I'm not even done. Let me help you with this. If God never halts the enemy, will you still serve him? Well, I'm thankful for those passages where he steps in and stops the enemy. But can I say there's a lot of passages where he doesn't stop the enemy. There are things in this Bible that are hard. You wonder, why didn't God step in? Because he's God. If he doesn't halt the enemy and you're facing a sorry, no good devil and opposition every step you take, you still going to serve him? I want to tell you on account of Jeremiah in chapter number 20, he had all he thought he could take. He said, I'm not even going to speak his name anymore. He faced opposition every step of the way. He said, I'm going to quit. He said, but there's a fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't quit. I wonder, you got a fire shut up in your bones? If he doesn't halt the enemy, will you still serve him? Then let me say this. If the Lord doesn't hold you, will you still serve him? Miss Janet said he never forsook her. He was right there. You talked to her. They didn't even give her any local. They didn't give her any kind of anesthesia. They didn't number at all and did a heart cat. And she said when they stitched her up, she thought she was going to heaven. Did she about come up off that table? Well, what if God wasn't there holding your hand? You still going to serve him? Now listen. This message can only be answered when you go through the fire. I know we would all say, Lord willing, I'm going to stand. Lord willing, I'm going to serve the Lord. Lord willing, I'm going to, I'm going to be everything that that Bible tells me to be. But we really don't know till we face the pressure. But here's the case and the point for the message. Shouldn't we begin preparing ourselves and asking God that if he ever pulls us out of the shepherd's bag to be the rock to take down the giant that we'll be a smooth stone ready and meet for the master's use shouldn't we ask the Lord to help us that regardless of what befalls us we'll serve him shouldn't we ask him God incorporate something in me that would propel me past me so I'll serve you God help me not to have a, a Rambo or John Wayne mentality only God give me a, a, a David give me a Joshua in my heart mentality that I'm going to serve you regardless of what I may face God help me to accept the if not, if that be your will, and still serve you. God, help me, because you've been so good to me. I don't want to dishonor you. I want you to receive glory from my life, whether I'm on the mountaintop, whether I'm in the valley. By the way, that's where we grow in the valleys. Lord, whether I'm halfway up or halfway down, whatever I'm, I'm faced with, God, help me to be somebody you can trust to serve you regardless of my circumstances or situation because God you've earned that you deserve that from my life because you've been so good to me are you willing tonight to ask God to prepare you and to help you that regardless You'll say, O oh, king, we're not going to serve you. The Lord is well able to deliver us, but if not, he will deliver us out of your hand. I'm going to serve you. I want.
to be faithful and true because he's been faithful and true to me. I wonder tonight. But if not, will you still serve him? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song. Let's Tina come to the piano. This message is answered in your life. I wonder tonight, are you willing to come and ask the Lord to equip you for what may lie ahead? While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, I know tonight's message wasn't a shout message. Lord, I do know that you did deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Lord, I do know you was the fourth man in the fire. Lord, we have seen the end of the story, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't. They just chose to serve you regardless. And Lord, that's easy talk, but not always easy living. So God, I pray you'd equip us and you'd help us and you'd establish something within us that God, we truly would serve you regardless of our circumstances. Lord, if we're only serving you because you bless us, Lord, we're a shallow Christian. But God, help us to serve you regardless because you are truly worthy to be praised, to be served, to be worshipped. You're worthy for us to live for you. And Lord, we're worthy down to our last breath to give you praise because you truly have been the best thing that ever happened to us. Now, blessing this invitation, speak to hearts. God, send revival these days. It may take a thought process like tonight to get us really on focus that, God, we can have revival. Bless now. Have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.